Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to begin the first of several little tutorial videos on the topic of the TI-84 Plus Calculator. Now I want to make it clear in the beginning here that the uh, TI-84 Plus Calculator is very very similar to the uh, TI-83 series calculators, 83 and 83 Plus. So really if you have an, a TI-83 or a TI-83 Plus or an 84 or an 84 plus really everything that we're going to talk about here is going to be completely applicable for you uh, the calculators are very similar there's some internal differences but you know they're really not that different um, so what we're going to do in this section is really just give an overview of the calculator we're not going to get into a lot of great detail on every little function here but we're going to sort of take a quick little tour of what you have in front of you so you open up the calculator you get it out of the box and uh, it's just a little bit uh, intimidating at first because you know there's this large screen so if you've never had a graphing calculator before that might intimidate you you've got these buttons underneath a little keypad of course you've got your numbers that's probably the most familiar part of the whole thing and then you've got all these little other buttons kind of hanging around here different colors and everything and so it can get very complicated so or it can seem very complicated well I'm here to tell you that once you understand how they put the calculator together and really start using it then it's just like anything else I mean you'll, you'll really get the hang of it and you'll, you'll save a lot of time so if you're just trying to do good in your class or if you're prepping for the SAT or the GRE or uh, anything like that understanding how your calculator works is going to save you a lot of time okay so let's do a quick little tour of what we have here in front of us um, basically we have a large screen here and we'll see as we start inputting things that uh, you can put numbers you know into the calculator up here and you can hit the enter key and then the calculator will accept those numbers and so as you make inputs the inputs are going to be sort of on the left hand side of the screen anytime you type anything in here if you want to add uh, three to this then you're going to hit enter and then whatever you type in is going to sort of be stuck over on the left and then whatever the calculator sort of provides as the answer is going to be over on the right so that would apply to to anything that you do here so here we're multiplying 87 times 2 and the calculator spits out an answer over there now as you continue to input things here eventually you're going to fill up the screen and you'll see the screen is going to scroll up so after you get to a point where you're going to want to free up your screen maybe this is getting a little bit too cluttered for you one of your best friends on this calculator is going to be the clear key so you would hit this clear button and the clear button is going to clear the entire screen so now it's clean slate uh, there so this part of the calculator down here we've just been using and that like I said is going to be the most familiar part to you know to, to everybody here because we have numbers one two three four five six seven eight nine we've got zero here we've got a decimal point so far it's not too different um, there's a little uh, a little negative sign right here that's going to be your best friend because of all of you are at least in algebra or above so if you want to input negative five you have to hit this button negative five so if you wanted to add negative five to five then you would just add them like that and hit the enter key here and it's going to provide zero because negative five plus five is zero. One thing to note in this calculator is really there's no equal sign. Um, so normal calculators have an equal sign, but this guy is sort of like it's more like a computer. So when you want to input something, you're going to have to hit the enter key, and then the calculator will go off and evaluate it. So this is why this little this little uh, negative sign is down here. You know, negative fifteen plus five. Uh, and you evaluate that of course is going to provide negative 10 and it tells you that it's negative in the answer as well so that is how you input negative numbers now of course you have the standard things uh, add subtract multiply and divide so like if you were going to do 63 times uh, negative 1 that's how it would show 63 times looks like this asterisk here negative 1 you would hit enter and then out would spit the answer negative 63 okay so this part really behaves like a normal calculator 5 times 6 gives us 30 um, 6 divided by 3 will give us 2 now notice for division it puts it uh, it writes it like a fraction so 6 over 3 6 divided by 3 and so it's just going to display it like that for you even though the symbol is a little regular division symbol right and um, of course you can clear the display by hitting the clear key 
Now, one thing to notice in this whole calculator is, so here we've sort of covered this little section down here. This is sort of like a regular calculator. Everything else on the screen is totally new to you if you've never had a scientific calculator or graphing calculator before. Um, these buttons all do various things. We're going to cover them in a lot of detail here in the, in the next uh, you know, several sections. But for now, I just want to kind of hit, hit the high points of everything else on the screen to kind of loosen you up a little bit and, and so that you uh, realize that it's not, not that difficult of a thing to learn. The first thing is sort of the most basic thing. The numbers and the letters that are printed in white all over these buttons here, that is, that's obviously the function that, um, that the um, button does. So if you were going to press 5 and then you were going to press this button here that says X squared, you press that button, you see the display up here says 5 squared. So that, that is the button that you press when you want to square something. And of course if you hit enter, it's going to tell you 5 squared is 25, which is what you already know. Um, you can play around with this. 4 squared is going to give you what you expect, 16, you know. 6 squared is going to give you what you expect, that's, that's 36. So let's go ahead and clear the uh, screen. Now over here we have x to the negative 1. Now if you remember from algebra, anytime you raise something to the negative 1 power, it's like uh, saying 1 over or 1 divided by that number. So if you put 2 here and then you click this button, then what it's telling you is 2 to the negative 1 power. And from your algebra, you should remember, or if you watch my DVDs, then, then you'd learn that in the DVDs, is that this is exactly the same thing as saying 1 over 2, 1 divided by 2. So when you hit the Enter key, it's going to tell you that's 0.5. Um, if you put 4 in here and hit this button, 4 to the negative 1 power is the same thing as 1 fourth, and so you get 0.25, and that's, that's what we have here. So let's clear the display. The logarithm button uh, is used to, to uh, take logs to the base 10. The LN button is uh, to take logs when you have a base E, and you should have learned that in your algebra or, or trig courses. Uh, what else are sort of the high points here? Sine and cosine and tangent, they behave just like you might think. You know, hit 5 and hit the sine button. And uh, well, in fact, here what happens is if you hit 5 first and then you hit the sine button, it is going to take the number 5 multiplied by the sine of 5. And so that's what's going to be uh, here. If you want to just take the sine of a number, you hit the sine button first and then stick whatever on the inside you want. And then, of course, you need to close the parentheses because it's leaving it open for you. You close those parentheses, hit the Enter key. Sine of 2 is evaluated by this. Um, so you have your sine, your cosine, your tangent that you've learned from trigonometry. Notice that you have the parentheses down here, and that behaves just like you, you would expect. It's regular algebraic parentheses. So if you wanted to take 5 and you wanted to multiply it by something, uh, you know, 6 minus 2 on the inside, you close those parentheses, then the calculator is going to take 6 minus 2 is going to be 4. 4 times 5 should give us 20, and that's what it's gonna, going to uh, provide back. So you can put anything you want inside of these parentheses, just like you would in a regular algebraic expression. All right. Uh, what else is most important here? Uh, of course, there's the on button over here. That's obviously important. And uh, at this point, I think I want to say, I'm going to go over a few more of these buttons here, but I think at this point I want to say that these letters written in blue, those are basically second functions. So there's, there's, two, there's so many functions in this calculator that there isn't enough space to put a button for all of them. So some of the more important functions, they write them in blue, and in order to access the function, you have to hit the second function key first. Notice when you press this button, the cursor flashes to a little up arrow. And that's telling you that when you press a button, it's not going to do what's printed on the button. It's going to do what's printed above the button uh, there. So if you wanted an example of that, if uh, I were going to do, uh, if I wanted to take E and raise it to the power of something, I see right here that right above the natural log button is E to the X. So in order to access that, I have to hit second function and then this button. And then you see what it prints up here, E raised to the power, that's what this symbol means raised to the power of let's say 2. I close my parentheses and then I hit the enter key and then it evaluates that. So basically at this point half of the calculator is demystified now for you because you can see that all these functions in blue 10 raised to the power of a number. The square root is another really simple one. What if you wanted to take the square root of 4? Well the only, where, where, only place that it's written is here so you need to hit second function and then that will bring up the square root 
symbol, square root of four, close the parentheses, is two. So you can look all over the place here, and we're gonna go into a lot of detail here. Uh, we're not gonna go over every button at this point, but just another example over here is the uh, number pi. If you wanted to use pi in a calculation, you don't have to remember what it is. You just hit second function, and then over here, you press this button, it's gonna pull up pi. And if I just were to hit enter, then that's 3.14 and on and on. And you can, you know, take five times pi, let's say, if you needed to do that in a calculation, and then you get the answer. So you see, that's how you basically navigate the calculator. You have buttons, and then you have second functions that are printed above the buttons. Now also, there's a green, something in green written above all of these buttons, and those are all letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and you could go on and on all the way through Z, and there's even some other uh, things, like there's a solve thing down here, and there's a few other uh, Greek letters if you look closely. Um, most of the time, these are just letters of the alphabet, and those are basically variables that you can store things in. So if you wanted to store you know, a number inside of a variable, let's call it A, and the way you access those letters is with this green button. So if I wanted to access the letter A, I would just hit the green button and then this button, and that would bring up the letter A. Now, when I hit enter, you notice that it puts a zero up here. And that is because there's nothing, or I should say the number zero is by default stored in all of these letters. Uh, on the calculator, A through uh, F. So, so basically these are variables. These are like temporary storage um, places. I mean, you're not gonna use this too much, but let's say for whatever reason you wanted to store the number, uh, you know, 52.3. Let's say you were doing a calculation that you use the number 52.3 a lot. And so you didn't wanna type in 52.3 all the time. You thought it would be a lot easier if you just store that. So I'm gonna press the store button if you store that in a variable. So let's store it in the letter A. So let's hit uh, alpha and then A here. So you see what the calculator is doing. 52.3 is gonna be stored, that's what the arrow is, in the letter A. So we hit the enter button and then it tells us, okay, 52.3 is there. Now let's clear the display. If we put A back onto the screen and hit the enter button, out spits 52.3. So if I'm doing a long calculation, uh, A, plus five, plus, let's get crazy here, A, and let's go ahead and hit second function. Uh, actually, let's don't do second function, let's do A squared. So you see A plus five plus A squared, and A is equal to 52.3. We hit the enter key, and it tells us what the answer is. So that's really useful if you're uh, using a number a whole lot of times. All right, the only other button I think I wanna mention here, or the only other couple buttons I wanna mention here is, uh, if you have numbers there and you want to make a correction, then you can obviously go back with the arrow keys. That are, that's what these are for. This little whole keypad is used for text entry, entry, and it's also used when you're doing your graphing of your equations. So I can go back, and if I want to uh, delete this, this specific letter here, once it's highlighted, I hit the delete key, and it takes it away. If I want to go over to the 9 and hit the delete key, I can do that. Now, once it's highlighted here, let's say I want to insert something. I can insert some more numbers. I hit second function, hit this guy that inserts, and I can continue typing, and notice that uh, it's pushing that five off to the right because I'm inserting it. So five is still here at the end. All right, and let's go ahead and see what else I want to do here. The other thing that I want to point out before we go off and talk about the graphing functions is uh, this button right here. It has X, T, theta, and N. And I'm not gonna tell you all about what it means, but this button is special because we use the, the variable, the letter X, all the time in algebra. So they actually put a button that basically just does X. So you don't have to hit uh, alpha and uh, find another um, uh, key anywhere down here. X is always at your fingertips. So you can hit enter and you'll see that X is equal to zero. And you can store numbers inside of this guy just like you do with the uh, alpha key here. And if you call up X again, it'll show you that 12 is indeed stored there. So those about uh, cover the big picture uh, keys that you really need to understand. The mode key here, this brings up a whole display of things that you can set in the calculator and, and it tells you, you know, how many decimal places for everything. We're gonna go through all of this later, but that's what this, that's what this guy is about. Um, 
Let's see, there is a math menu here. If you click that, you're going to see a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Basically, um, you know, they're, they're, even with all the second functions, there's really not enough keys to, to do all of the math functions that the calculator can, can provide. So they have some menus here. Uh, you see there's a math menu. If you go to the right and you highlight number, there's a number menu. There's a complex number menu and there's a probability menu here. So if you go, for instance, to the number menu, the first one here is absolute value. So there's no absolute value key anywhere on the calculator, even in the second function. There's just too many um, functions. So they put them in a menu. But if you wanted to do the absolute value, you would just highlight it just like it is here, hit the enter key, and then out here spits absolute value. And you could put negative five here in, close the parentheses, hit enter, and the calculator is going to tell you, well, the absolute value of negative five is five. And that's basically that. So that is a good overview of these keys. Now, what I want to show you up here, these keys at the top, these are all used for the graphing functions. We haven't even talked about that yet. And we're going to go into great detail on that. But I just want to give you a quick, a quick heads up on what these mean. The first one, y equals, is basically where you put your equations at. Uh, it's basically, uh, you know, you can put seven different equations here at once and plot them all at the same time. But if, so if you were going to plot, you know, y is equal to x, some really simple thing, then you would just hit this button here for the x, and so you would have y equal to x there. Uh, and that equation is now input into the calculator. And if you go over here to the graph button, it will then switch over to the graph display, and it's going to plot the equations that you have set up over here. So the one that's set up is y is equal to x. And so that is the graph that's going to be plotted here. Now you could put six more equations in there and it would plot six more equations over here. Uh, in fact, you can do that. Let's say you wanted to go down here, down arrow, uh, and then you wanted to put, let's say, x you know, squared just to make it easy. That's something that we all know what it looks like. So when you go to the graph button, see now you have x squared, y is equal to x squared, along with y is equal to x. These uh, other buttons here, the zoom button, uh, basically has a lot of different functions to let you zoom in on the graph and get closer to it. Uh, the trace button uh, basically puts a little blinking cursor on top of the uh, on top of the graph, and so by using the arrow keys, you can scoot right along the uh, right along the graph and read off the x and y values right off of the display. That's really really useful. Uh, the window button is what you use to set up your um, your axis. So right now the x-axis is from negative 10 to positive 10 and the y-axis is also from negative 10 to positive 10. And that's just what's by default. You can see the little tick marks here is from negative 10 to positive 10. So I think that about does it for a general overview of the TI-84 calculator. Of course it, it also applies to the TI-83 and the 83 plus and the 84 and the 84 plus. Just a general overview it looks complicated, but folks, really when you start using it, it's very user friendly and it's so easy to, to, to check your work. Once you know how to do it, it's going to make your life easier and actually going to help you uh, get better grades. I always tell people that calculators don't, don't get grades. Your brain is the thing that gets you the grades, but with a good calculator and knowing how to use it, you can check your work so much faster and, and, and check possibilities so much faster that you're just going to, to fly through things a lot better if you understand this tool that's right here in front of you. I'm Jason from MathTutorDVD.com, and uh, in the following sections of the series, we're going to be looking in detail at all of these little buttons here, all the little functions, and really get good with the TI series of calculators.